What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Vista of Series. I mentioned to you at the beginning of the year that I will be doing a series on the heavyweight champions. And that day starts today. And I was going to leave out John L. Sullivan for various reasons. Let's talk about John O'Sullivan. Now, John O'Sullivan faced James J. Corbett, September 7th, 1892. It was the end of the Carnival of Champions. John O'Sullivan was 34 years old. That was his 60th bout. James J. Corbett was 26 years old. He had two brothers, a mother and a father that was all involved in the game of boxing. The referee for that bout was John Duffy. John O'Sullivan weighed 211 pounds. Corbett weighed 178 pounds. Corbett was a former bank teller. He faced nine Hall of Famers during the course of his career. He had three bouts with Joe Terensky. Two wins, one no contest. He would lose his title to Bob Fitzsimmons. Face Charlie Mitchell, Jake Kilrain, and Tom Sharkey. The stipulation in the bout with John O'Sullivan was that John O'Sullivan must wear five hands gloves and winner take all. Now, we'll talk about John O'Sullivan. He faced some premium fighters during his day. But John O'Sullivan was as racist as can be. Not only did he not fight, George Godfrey, Old Chocolate. Not only did he not fight, Peter Jackson, the Black Prince. But there were several other black fighters that he refused to face. In fact, he drew the color line. He said he would never give the N-word a shot at his title. And it's important that we get graphic with history. Because that was the nature of the time. And if we're going to talk about boxing, we must mention it in its entirety. Now, John O'Sullivan had his last and first world championship bout, bare knuckle and glove at the same time. What am I talking about? John O'Sullivan did not want to wear gloves. They were fighting under the rules of the London prize ring. And John O'Sullivan wanted to fight under the Marcus of Queensbury rules. So John O'Sullivan stated to Gentleman Jim Corbett, if I wear gloves, winner takes all. And James Corbett sat on that stipulation for a day or two. And John O'Sullivan knew James Corbett had the money because James Corbett was a bank teller. He had investments. And the only way they can pull this off would be in New Orleans. New Orleans was one of 21 states that legalized boxing. And James J. Corbett was a part of 
the Olympic Sporting Club. John O'Sullivan was not. And the way you can get into that club, you had to be a dignitary. You had to have somewhat of a name. And Corbett walked around as though he was the president of the country. He was the biggest con man of them all. So he was able to get into that club. So they put money up for James A. Corbett. John O'Sullivan had bluffed James A. Corbett. He didn't think he would take the offer. And the reason why Corbett took the offer was because after he faced Peter Jackson, he ran an exhibition with John O'Sullivan and he saw how easy it was for him to hit John O'Sullivan. But he took it easy on John O'Sullivan because he didn't want to scare him off. He wanted the opportunity at the title. So he would allow himself to be bullied and hit. And John O'Sullivan to grab him, so on and so forth. But he knew he had him then. So he accepted the offer. So they set up the Carnival of Champions, where you would have three championship fights, three separate days. September 5th, September 6th, September 7th. And they would be the main headliner on the third day of that event. John O'Sullivan would be exhausted after 20 rounds. He couldn't continue. But because of his name, because of the pride, he was already in the fight. He decided to give it another round. And it was at that point, Corbett, after dancing around for 20 rounds, decided to fight him on the 21st round. And he would jab, throw overhand right, jab, another overhand right. He would move from side to side. Corbett was too fast for Sullivan. Sullivan fought his, the rest of the fight with his arms down. Mouth wide open. He was exhausted. As blood rushed down his nostril, down his right eye, his pants were red, soaked with fluid. And Sullivan would look at Corbett as to say, get this over with. And Corbett would oblige, hit him with a right hand, and John O'Sullivan would fall face down to the canvas. The fight was over. Brand new champion, James J. Corbett. He would now become the world heavyweight champion. Now, Peter Jackson felt as though he would get another shot, this time for the championship with Corbett. Now, Corbett would draw the color line. 
and Peter Jackson would be out of luck. Now, John O'Sullivan had a telegram conversation with Peter Jackson. And John O'Sullivan stated to Peter Jackson after a long conversation with his management that he would consider Peter Jackson providing Peter Jackson would defeat Gentleman Jim Corbett. Now, John O'Sullivan was offered to face George Godfrey. George Godfrey was known as Old Chocolate. Very good black fighter during his time. And he stated that he would give George Godfrey a shot. But then later that afternoon, he would send a telegram to George Godfrey. That he wouldn't give him a shot because some demands that were not met. Meanwhile, a telegram was given to George Godfrey from Peter Jackson. So those two decided to fight. And George Godfrey would be knocked out in 19 rounds. That was some fight. And George Godfrey, who was the colored heavyweight champion, would lose his title to the Black Prince, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson would also hold the Australian heavyweight championship title. But he would never get a shot with John O'Sullivan. Why? Because the fight with Jim Corbett and Peter Jackson would go 61 rounds. It was originally called a no contest. But the referee, his name was Hiram Cook. He said, no, 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 no way. This is the draw. Because Corbett was wobbled three times in a fight. And so they made it a draw. And it was prearranged providing our draw would be the outcome. So both men would split the purse. And they would earn $2,500 each. Otherwise, Corbett would have received $8,000. Jackson would have received $1,000. So after receiving the news that the fight was a draw, John O'Sullivan, oh, what do you want me to tell you? You didn't win. So now Corbett would get the shot. September 7th, 1892. John O'Sullivan would be knocked out in 21 rounds. Jim Corbett would be the heavyweight champion of the world. And he never gave Peter Jackson another shot at this time for the title. February 7th, 1882. Boston John O'Sullivan becomes the world bare knuckle heavyweight champion, nine rounds, when he knocks out Patty Ryan in Mississippi. That was impressive to the sports writers during that time. And John O'Sullivan 
would walk around Boston, all the saloons, stating that he would beat every son of a bitch in the house. July 8, 1889. World Bare Knuckle Champion, John O'Sullivan, knocks out Jake Kilrain in 75 rounds. The fight took place in Richburg, Mississippi. Referee was John Fitzpatrick. John O'Sullivan weighed 198 pounds. Jake Kilrain weighed 195 pounds. And this fight was basically to be unified. John O'Sullivan was the bare knuckle, America's heavyweight champion. Jake Kilrain was the Police Gazette heavyweight champion. Jake Kilrain would win that crown 1887 when he took on Jim Smith of England. Jim Smith was the England's Heavyweight champion. And promises were made. Once again, Peter Jackson could get a shot. And that's when Peter Jackson was told that if you take on Gentleman Jim Corbett, I will consider it. That fight took place Now, I just want to take a look at John O'Sullivan for one moment. Now, John O'Sullivan is going to box four rounds with Steve Taylor. It will take back uh, take place at the Hartford Baseball Ground, July 4th. And Sullivan would also pitch the game between Waterbury and Hartford Baseball Club. Sullivan will attract a large crowd. That is the national holiday at Hartford quite a sporting town. Now as we scroll down, the glove contest between Pat Killing, it was our pet St. Paul and Pasty Cardiff, who made such a great effort to conquer Sullivan. It's to be 10 three minute rounds and it's to take place in Washington Rink, Minneapolis, August 6th. Now I wanted to show you this article. This book is John O'Sullivan, 1,000 pages of the entire book is John O'Sullivan. Many of them are Police Gazette's articles. And I just wanted to show you, Jim Smith was the backers uh, as Honest as they call, uh, as they claim. In other words, if they're as honest as they claim to be, the offers to match Smith to meet any man in the world, according to London Prize Ring rules, for two thousand, which was the side bet. Now, normally the side bet is five thousand dollars. And the reason why John O'Sullivan didn't accept this offer is because he didn't have the backers for his $5,000 side bet. So instead, J. Kilrain would step in. J. Kilrain would defeat Jim Smith. Jim Smith was the England's heavyweight champion.
But anyway, I can show you a lot of articles about this, but John O'Sullivan was exposed by Jim Corbett. That's why he didn't want to face Peter Jackson or the old chocolate, George Godfrey. Because he knew he couldn't defeat a boxer. And those men were master boxers. I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel.